All right, I'm real excited about this video. Let me move this out of the way. My uh, Grizzly 2 by 72 inch belt sander came in, it's sitting right here. Um, it's partially put together. I need to screw this on tight. This plate's on. I wanted to see if it was going to fit. I wanted to see if all the parts were here. It looks like they all are, so I'm going to finish it up. Um, not going to do a video on me putting this together. There's a lot of good videos out there uh, that do a good job. It's, I've looked at a couple of them. The one thing I did do, let me get out of the way, electrician's tape, because I know I'm going to have to fix the tracking problems that these have that they talk about. But I'm real excited about this. When I get it going, I'll do some videos of me actually using it and uh, figuring out how to use it. Uh, I've had it turned on. I have a Harbor Freight. You can see it off to the side. A little 1x30. It's loud. i got to wear air protection when I use it. won't have to use air protection for this one because it's so quiet. But uh, let me get this together and uh, if there's any problems with me doing that, I'll let you know. Otherwise, it's going to be put together the next time you see it and I'm going to be using it. Well, I got the uh, beast put together, and uh, yes, I do need to clean up my shop. <coughs> so let me talk about this. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, got it put together. went together relatively easy. I was real surprised. Directions were easy to read. I didn't have to refer to the videos. There's a ton of videos out there about putting this together. First of all, I paid $835. Now you go to a lot of the videos, they're $400, $500, $600, they're old videos. And that was shipping included. I got two packs of belts that ran me, the total was uh, $908. That included shipping. The question is, is it worth it? Yes, most definitely. Uh, <laughs> this, this darn thing has really improved the time that uh, it takes me to move uh, steel, sharpen blades. I've only had it for a, a day and a half, and I've done a, already a lot of stuff. And I'm going to show you that in a minute. Now, let me tell you about a few things about this thing. One, you will notice this over here, this bar. I put that there because I put a wire brush on the end that you can see. That scares the bejeebies out of me. I was working in here and my glove brushed up against it and uh, there's quite a big pucker factor there. That just keeps me away from it when I'm more concentrating on the knife than and not paying attention to that. Um, that for me it's not an issue with the design, it's not an issue with the way they built this I mean they did a really good job I when you put this up and you look at that and you put one of the especially a uh, wire brush you're gonna have to decide if you want to put something up there to keep you away from it like I said I brushed up against it with my glove and and almost a little out because it scared the crap out of me now I've got some pictures of this knife I'm going to insert. And I took quite a bit of metal off of this. Let me set this up here like the other knife was. And zoom in. And you can kind of see how much it took off. And it only took a few minutes to do that. Now let me zoom back out so this may be a while. That's what I was afraid of. Edit time. Okay, I'm back out enough. Now, I'm space starved in this shop. 
I've got the uh, table saw over here. This is not bolted down. I'm still working out where, how far I want it that way. And it doesn't seem to affect it not being bolted down. Eventually it will be. Um, water container. I'm saying you have to have one of those. Catches a tremendous amount of debris. And this throws off debris. I have been using, as you can see in the corner, um, a 1 by 30 Harbor Freight. I mean, it's a good little tool for the money, but there's no comparison to how much this will go through metal uh, when you're shaping it and stuff. Uh, it's, it's just amazing. This did not take me long to do. This, I don't have a before picture because I wasn't planning on doing this. It was a lawnmower blade, uh, quite a bit longer. The shape of the blade I had to take probably about five inches off of it, maybe six. And I took the blade, was just messing with it, and 30 minutes later I had it all cut down. And it looks like crap because this is one of my first attempts. And I do want it to look a little bit post-apocalyptic zombie type weapon. But I'm actually almost ready to, to harden this. I've got to do some more work on it, but not that much. If I was using my 1x30, it would be a lot, but this is not going to take me long at all. Now, let me get rid of this in the back. One of the first things I noticed, and if I can do this without messing up the camera, my 1x30, it took me quite a while to change belts. This... And that's it. Now, a little bit more zoom. Alright. I did a lot of research before I bought this. That's I pretty much knew I was gonna like it because I, I hours and hours of research on YouTube. This is electrician's tape. It has a tracking problem out of the box. You can put tape here or on the bottom wheel. It's got to be up here. You can add it, add it to the bottom wheel if you're still having trouble. With this, I did not have a tracking problem. It solved it. All right. Let's get back out. Now when you put this belt back on, <laughs> I absolutely love this. You just press down. All right, that's it. You're ready to go. Now for the loudness test. I don't use air protection with this. Uh, my 1x30 I do because it is so freaking loud. Uh, I don't use it with this. However, some type of face shield eye protection you have to have with this. This throws off so much debris on the lower grits. Um, when you talk, that's a 60 grit and it just, crap just comes off the metal. It's just amazing. Uh, I wear a leather apron. If you don't, it's going to just blacken your clothes. Um, gloves. All that stuff is, is really important on this uh, grinder. Now, the work table. Some people don't like it. Um, I went by 30. I took it off. I don't use it. Uh, it didn't do the job. I couldn't get good 90 degrees on it. Right now I have it on. I think I'm going to leave it on. Uh, I'm going to do some experimenting, but I put that on the wrist, ground it down, and these are pretty sharp. I think with a little bit of practice I can get these to, uh, especially right here, to be used on a ferrule rod. 
So I may keep that. It's just going to have to, I'm going to have to use it for a while. But the bottom line is, I'm glad I got this. This is amazing. Um, you're going to hear people say, well, it's not as good as the other ones. Yeah, it's half the price or the price of the other ones. Um, this puts it at the high end hobby level or the low end um, early professional wanting to start making money off of building knives. Now, I do art welding, so I'm going to use it in some of my art projects to uh, shape metal. So it's kind of like a double whammy for me. But if you're thinking about getting one of these, it's easy to put together. Um, I was expecting it to take it to, excuse me, to take a lot longer. It took me about taking my time about 45 minutes just to make sure everything was where it needed to be. It's pretty straightforward. Um, the tape fixed the tracking issue. I may toy around with this adjustment to make it tighter. Um, I probably will end up um, the plat, plat, whatever they call this brace back here. I'm probably going to end up modifying that eventually because they say it, the uh, fiber material they use on it wears out pretty quick. I'll just have to see. Uh, bottom line is, if you're thinking about doing this and you're willing to spend the money, but you're not sure it's going to be worth it, so far, I'm going to say, yeah, it's worth it. It's a huge difference on the way it moves metal, and I'm going to show you that here in a little bit. Um, I've got some stuff I'm going to, I'll show you. i got to reset the camera up. So let me do that and show you a little bit of metal movement and end this video after that. All right, let me get my gear on and show you how this works. And again, I'm gonna tell you, I'm dead serious. Wear safety gear with this. Leather apron. Mask. All right, I don't know if you can hear me through this mask, but let's get this show on the road. All right. Let me get out of this gear. Oh, maybe not all of it. Now, if you're used to a 1x30, you're looking at this going, holy crap. Uh, this really moves and takes stuff off. It's uh, it's just hard to explain. I'm going to do this real quick even though I shouldn't. I mean, it moves it that fast. It's just amazing. 
Um, if you're making knives or doing art and you need to shape or reduce or just sand, this will do it. This will do it quick. Now, and other videos will tell you this. This arm's adjustable. You can lay it down and put it at different angles relatively easy. Um, I like mine at a 90. I put this at a 90 and I'm going to do some uh, ferro rod strikers. I'm going to make some of them because I think I can do that with this. Uh, I could never get them at the right angle or the right sharpness with my 1x30 from Harbor Freight. It, the Harbor Freight's good. I'm going to use it for sharpening knives and kind of use it as a dedicated knife sharpener because it's really good for that. Um, and they make all the belts in the world to do that. And they make them for this too, but I think I'm going to dedicate this to just shaping. Bottom line is, it's worth it. Um, I'm glad I got it. I'm going to be doing a lot of work on it. Um, yesterday I ran this. This motor got actually pretty hot because I ran it for a long time. And it didn't seem to bother it at all. So to uh, wrap it up, like I said, it's worth the money. I'm glad I got it. You'll be seeing it some more in my videos. It does everything it says it's going to do. I looked at a ton of videos and I convinced myself, okay, I'll get it. I know there's going to be some things I don't like about it. Um, and I'll just have to deal with that. It surpasses my expectations. Um, I don't know why I thought it, there was going to be bigger issues with it that I was going to have to overcome. There is one that I just remembered. When you start using this and you hit that, it's going to want to pull it down. And I was thinking, holy crap, I don't know if I can deal with that. I may have to stick it on the wrist. And then I remembered that 1x30 did that a little bit, and I got used to that. It did not take me long to where that's not a problem anymore. And I use magnets to hold on to it, which really helps, keeps my hands away from it, keeps the gloves away from the belt. Uh, gives me pretty good control. Uh, in some cases, better control. Now, some places I'll use my hand. It just You're going to have to get used to that. Um, so, in short, if you're thinking about getting one of these, I'm going to tell you it's worth the money. It's easy to put together. It's powerful, the power on this thing. If you're used to a 1x30 or even a 4x36 from Harbor Freight is amazing. Um, so far I've been able to do quite a bit, even more than what I thought I was going to be able to do, even faster than what I thought I was going to be able to do it. The jump between the 1x30 to the 2x72, it's a big jump, uh, but it's not a hard one to make. I was kind of surprised how fast I'm getting used to the quirks about using a bigger, more powerful grinder. So, to uh, sum this up, yeah, if you're thinking about it, it's worth it. At least I believe it's worth it. And I would have no hesitation to recommending that people get this uh, grinder, especially for what it's going to cost you to get one of the big ones. If you're jumping up from a 1x30 or a 4x36 um, and you don't want to spend thousands of dollars right here it is this is what you need well thanks for watching the video